tell me, Bill, you know, if you come down here, are you just going to bring all of these employees up from up, from up north down here, or are you going to try to invest and help us develop our education system so we can produce the kind of workers that will be good for you and are going to help you succeed? And so these people, you know, they were sophisticated. They had fundamental questions. And when you stop and think about it, what were they really asking? They were really asking me, Bill, are you going to bring in a company, the kind of company that's going to move toward and try to progress and proceed towards sustainability, in which case we'd welcome you with open arms? Or are you going to be the kind of organization that's going to work against that, in which case, please stay home, we've got plenty of problems of our own. We don't need it to be worse. So without really articulating sustainability, they were hitting at the ask, what sustainability really was and why it's important. So often I think whether well, you know, something in sustainability or not, I think back to those people, would this be something that we'd be concerned about? And if it is, most likely it fits in that bucket. So in an intuitive level, just trying to have a gut feel for it, uh, that's the experience that I go back to, those people and what they're really concerned about. And you think about it, if you were there and living in those kind of communities, those would be the questions you'd be asking too, right? Sure. But of course, we do have these general definitions, these sort of book learning definitions we've all heard of, you know, all goes back to the old UN Brundtland Commission some uh, 20, 30 years ago. Um, I think it's only 20, 20, 23 years. It's something that long, has it? Mm -hmm. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. You know, this is all well and good. It's basically the, the notion is we're going to live off the interest of our economic, social, environmental resources and leave the principle for future generations so they can continue to live as good as not better than we are. I mean, that's the big broad concept. Uh, all well and good, but it doesn't really help me understand what I should be doing back in my office, right? It's hard to take that and say, well, what does that mean? Uh, a little Closer cut came with John Elkington, maybe 10 years later, uh, associate of mine out of the UK, and he said, look, really the way you look at this, it's, it's it, you know, companies looking at it from an organizational perspective, companies have always had this obligation to, to make, to be profitable, to meet this sort of financial bottom line, profitability, but I'm telling you today, it's, that's, those expectations are changing. It's not just about the financial bottom line, but there's also a social environmental expectation out there around responsibility, and so in effect, uh, the concept would be you need to meet a triple bottom line of economic, social, and environmental responsibility. That's what people expect today. And so that's, that's uh, you know, one of the predominant kind of views of this. Uh, but when you look at it uh, a little closer and you, 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 you look at, I've looked at some, you know, 20 different definitions and I've, under, you know, tried to work with the concept and understand how people are approaching it, and what you begin to see is is this kind of a emerging meaning of, the, of this, this term. This kind of emerging, I call it the two R's. And first and foremost aspect of this, which is important, is that it's not a collection of practices. It's not just about, okay, we're going to do energy uh, conservation, we're going to do recycling, you know, we're going to you know, try to offset our, our, our greenhouse gases. It's not just a collection of practices, but it's really a values-driven management approach. This is how we're going to run our organization. It's fundamental to the organization. Not a separate appendage out here, not a separate you know, set of not a program out here, but it's a fundamental approach to the way we're going to run our business. And the way we're going to run our business is through these values-driven management based on respect for people and other living things. Respect, we got your big R word there, but two R's. And the wise use of economic, four R's, yeah, for you. Wow. Wise use of economic and natural resources, right? So that's, those are the values that we're going to bring to bear as we run our organization. Everything we do is going to be kind of run through that filter. Now, why are we doing that? Well, it's all for the purpose, and this is where sustainability comes in, of sustaining and promoting the long-term well-being of our organization and society. And what, what sustainability becomes to mean is, as, as, as organizations are beginning to view it, is, yeah, okay, we've got to do this thing for society, but it makes, a little, uh, it makes a little sense for us to try to work to benefit society if we're also not trying to sustain ourselves. Because after all, the fact that we have an organization, the fact that we're able to employ people and provide their well-being, help support their well-being, is an important social function itself. So we want to try to perpetuate that as well at the same time perpetuating well-being for society. So that's where this notion of 
sustainability comes in. We're sustaining that. And we're doing it in this way, and we're doing it as a fundamental part of the way we do our business and not as a collection of practices. A lot of, a lot of people, a lot of CEOs don't get that. They say, well, it's a program. I'm going to do a couple of, do my real cycling program over here. I'm going to do some energy conservation, and boom, I'm done. No, it's not quite. And it's not just about the environment. Which raises this question. How are respect issues uh, related to economic and natural resource issues? Why are these three things thrown in the bucket together? Why aren't they just in separate silos? Why is this concept beginning to embrace all of those things? But yeah, that's true, but why, why are those three topics linked together? Why did those people in, in Mexico on the border, why did they link those things? Why did they ask those, all those questions of me? It wasn't just about, you know, are you going to try to, you know, uh, improve the sewage uh, and, the, and the air pollution? You know, it wasn't that. They were asking about these other things, too. Why were they doing that? Why would you do that? I want to better, better my life, I'd ask you. What am I going to get paid? Yeah. Yeah, and if you're in a town, you're in a town, you're, 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 you're a citizen of this town, you're, you've got the opportunity to come in and ask me, I'm a company that's thinking about moving in, you can ask me those questions. Why would you ask all of those questions of me? Why didn't you just ask me about the environment? Why didn't you just narrow that vision, that, that, those questions to this, the environment? Why did you broaden your questions? Why did you ask me about wages and all these other issues? I think it affects that. It has some underlying, with, like it all ties to not just what's outside the environment, but what's within your company, because that's what's going to take you in the longevity down the line. And what does it have to do with my life? You know, what does it have to do with your life? Let's put it that way. You're the citizen. I'm the company. What is, what, you know, what, what, you know, so, you know, we hear people, we, we hear people talk about, oh, you know, we're destroying the earth. We're not destroying the earth. We, you know, the earth's going to be there no matter what we do. In fact, if we, you know, blew ourselves up with the nuclear warheads, well, the earth's still going to move on. I mean, it's still going to be around. It's going to still be going around the sun, you know. The earth's going to do it very well on its own. Chemical stuff may be kind of mixed and concentrated in different ways, but, you know, that's happened over the eons. So the earth has, it's, it's no, no big deal for the, for the earth. We're not destroying the earth with regard to the earth itself. What are we destroying? What are we, what are we damaging? Our ability to live on it. Yeah, it's our perspective on this, right? We're screwing up our ability to live here. And the same thing with those people in, in Mexico, they were concerned about what? Not just about the environment, but a bigger question, what? Quality of life. The quality of life, their well-being, right? How my life is. I mean, we can have pristine air, but if I earn, you know, 10 cents an hour, what kind of a life have I got? I can't take my kids. There's no schools for my kids. What kind of a life have I got for my family? It's all about the well-being, and it's about, you know, doing the right thing. And there's no, let's, let's think about this. Here you are getting an education, right? Is there any, uh, this is a social thing that you're doing. It's a social improvement. You're, it's just, categorize it's not economics not environment. it's a social education is a social thing what does that have to do with economics what does that have to do with finances is there any correlation between this education that people get advanced education and economics what would you say sure yeah so what happens if, what, what what happens to is the general rule statistically what happens to people who have more education how does that affect them economically they get paid more they get paid more, absolutely, right? You've seen all the studies about that. But here's the other interesting thing. People that get paid more, how does that affect their consumption of resources and energy? 